Hi! So recently I've kind of got a bit of an obsession with verse novels. I've mentioned them I think in a couple of videos before. Um, I've mentioned them a million times in blog posts uh, and also on the podcast I think so. Uh, kind of a favourite genre for me. So the first person that I kind of discovered a few years ago that writes verse fiction is Sarah Crossan. So if you're not aware, verse fiction or verse novels are uh, whole novels that are written uh, in the style of free verse poetry. So every single page or um, kind of almost every page has its own, uh, its own poem. Sometimes the poems can be titled, like each one has its own title. Sometimes they don't, it just kind of runs like one long thing. Um, but they still kind of stand alone. Each page kind of stands alone as its own little verse, like free verse poem. So yeah, Sarah Crossan was the first person that I discovered who wrote like this and I loved it straight away. Um, and now I've got a little collection growing. So, I mean, most of them are Sarah Crossan, but I thought I would share my little collection of free verse novels uh, because I just love them so much and I recommend absolutely all of them. Even the couple that I haven't read yet probably still recommend them, so. <laughs> so the first one that I read recently, um, this was the last book that I finished actually, is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atter and it's just so pretty. I showed this in my last video, my um, Yelk one, my Yelk haul. I bought this at Yelk and I got it signed by Dean. Um, like the, the inside cover looks like this and then the back cover has a little gold flamingo on it. It's just such a pretty, such a pretty book. So yeah, it's just really cute. And this is about um, a boy who kind of, since he was a kid, he loved dolls and like all he wanted was a Barbie. Um, and he, when he goes to university, even through high school and when he goes to university, he discovers, um, what it's like to kind of be more open um, about your sexuality and not to be too scared about kind of being more flamboyant, <laughs> if that's the right word. Um, kind of not being scared to come out the closet and he decides when he's in uni that he is going to join a drag society and become a drag queen called the Black Flamingo. So it's such a fun book but it also has some issues in it that um, are kind of really important issues in terms of LGBT and sexuality and things. Um, yeah, definitely give it a read. I need to read some more of Dean Atter's poetry because um, the first time I discovered him was in the Proud anthology. Hang on, let me get it here. Um, one of his poems was featured in this. Um, it's a poem about coming out as gay if you want to, you don't have to, um, and it's all about kind of the different ways you can come out. Um, and yeah, so that's where I, I really like that poem. And then um, he, the same poem is in the back of, uh, of this book too. And he also read it out at Yelp, which was really cool to actually hear him perform it. I feel like um, a lot of his kind of stuff and a lot of free verse anyway, uh, has to be read aloud to kind of get the rhythm and stuff of it. So um, yeah, really good, definitely recommend this. So next I'll show you the one that I've just already showed you um, and that's Toffee by Sarah Crossan. This is another one that I've just read recently. I read this and The Black Flamingo kind of one after the other. So it was kind of good. I was in a, in a kind of poetry mood. Um, and this is, again, I kind of, this is one that I mentioned. I mentioned a few of these in my previous video. So if you've seen that, um, a lot of this might be a little bit repetitive, but I still wanted to do this video anyway, because why not? Um, so this is about a girl called Alison and she has run away from home and you don't find out until kind of later on the details about why she decided to kind of run away and how bad her home life is. Um, that kind of drove her out of her house. And she finds herself uh, in the house of Marla, who is this old woman who has dementia. And they become kind of unexpected friends. It's so good, I really liked it. Um, I reviewed it over on my friend Sarah's blog and then Sarah 
posted her review on my blog. So I'll link that below. Um, I'll link to both of our reviews so you can go and read both of those. But um, yeah, really good. Um, this is the first of many Sarah Crossan books I'm about to show you. So uh, yeah, get ready for more. <laughs> so next in the Sarah Crossan collection is The Weight of Water. Um, another one I mentioned in my previous video. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and I haven't read this one yet. This is one of the Sarah Crossan books that I haven't read yet and I feel like I should. Um, a lot of people kind of talk about how amazing it is. So I definitely am going to read this soon. I think I'm going to go on a little readathon of all of the books, the free verse books that I haven't read or ones that I read ages ago and I still haven't, uh, like I can't really remember them very well uh, if I've read them like a couple of years ago or whatever. So. I think I might go on a little readathon soon and just kind of power through all my verse fiction books because I can read them so quickly. Like the thing with them is that the way they're written is like they're, they've got hardly any words to a page. So um, it makes me read them really quickly. So with like with Toffee and with the Black Flamingo, I can find that so hard to say. <laughs> With Toffee and the Black Flamingo, um, it took me like, I don't know, a day or something to, to read through the whole book. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of read all of these in one go. And also I've just noticed the quote on the front of this is Kathy Cassidy, who I also love. So um, yeah, I will definitely read this soon and I will feed back when I've read it. Next is We Come Apart by Sarah Crossan and Brian Conahan. Um, this is about, um, this is one that I read a while ago. The review is on my blog, but I read it um, a couple of years ago. And so I can't really, this is one I need to reread re because I can't remember all the details about it very well. But um, I just remember that it's about a boy who comes from another country and all of his parts, it's kind of written from his perspective and then the perspective of Jess who um, is from this country and uh, all of his parts are written in kind of really broken English and it was so interesting to read. Um, I just love how it's written, like it kind of, it really helps with his characterization I think because of how his English is written. Um, and yeah, I just really enjoyed it, but I need to reread this. I bought this at Yalk because I read um, a copy from NetGalley, I think. So I think a lot of the formatting was a bit funny because it's not straight prose, it's like free verse. Um, a lot of the formatting was a little bit weird. So I need to read this again now that I can actually see how it should be um, in actual book format. <laughs> So another Sarah Crossan, and this is in, this is a proof, and it's in like this really cool little cardboard sleeve. <laughs> I love it. Um, this is Moonrise, and I just love this cover. Look how pretty this cover is, it, I love it. Um, and like the back is just so nice, and there's like a gold spine, and oh, I just love this book. <laughs> um, I picked this up at Yelk a couple of years ago, two years ago, I don't know, I can't remember. Um, and this is signed by Sarah Crossan. This is about somebody whose brother is on death row. Um, so Sarah Crossan writes a lot of quite heavy topics, um, which I kind of like, like it's, I kind of like young adult books to dive into some heavier topics sometimes. Um, obviously not all the time, like sometimes I wanna read something really lighthearted, but um, it just kind of explores things that you've never really considered before. Like I haven't, I don't think I've read anything about someone on death row. So it was a really cool book to read just to get that perspective um, and just to see how that story works out. And also because it's focused on, rather than like from his perspective, it's from the perspective of the rest of his family. So you can see how his family reacts to like having a family member um, on death row. So yeah, it's it's a really interesting one. Uh, and then the final Sarah Crossan, I have another Sarah Crossan book over there and that's Apple and Rain, but that's um, prose, it's not free verse. So um, that isn't, isn't in this video, so. <laughs> um, so I've got one more Sarah Crossan left and it's my favorite one so far. Um, 
I don't like to kind of say that something is my favourite if they have so many other books as well because I feel like I am almost comparing the rest of their books to their first one or like their early one but um, this book is one and uh, I reviewed this on my blog and I've raved about it so many times I just love this so much um, <laughs> this is about um, conjoined twins and how they just kind of see the positives in everything um, and it's heartbreaking <laughs> like it made me cry hardly anything makes me cry this made me cry um but it's also just really kind of positive and hopeful and um this was actually in my list of books that everybody needs to read um because i love it so much it was on that list of books that i just think make such a difference if you read it and you won't forget it if you do um yeah you just please read it please. <laughs> Next is one, I think I got this the same year that I picked up um, Moonrise and that's Good Night Boy by Nikki Sheehan. Um, I hadn't heard of this author, I don't know if this is her debut or not but um, I think she was at Yelk the year that I got this. Uh, I didn't get her to sign it though which I was a little bit sad about but um, I loved this like Again, it's a bit of a sad one, um, and it is kind of a mixture of prose, like it kind of flicks between prose and poetry, but the poetry bits um, are just kind of scattered throughout on their own pages, and then it goes back to being prose again. It's a really cool mixture, and uh, yeah, I just love it. I feel like I need to reread this one again as well. Um, because as someone who wants to try and write my own book that is either entirely free verse or kind of partially free verse, um, this is one that's interesting because it does flick between both. So I think this one maybe is a good book if you're not that into free verse or you haven't really read a free verse novel before. Um, this one might be a really good one as a starter um, because it does have that kind of flick between both. So you do get kind of the comfort of traditional prose, but then you can also kind of try out the free verse sections that are scattered throughout it as well. So, uh, yeah, really good. And then the final one in my collection, which I've only just bought today, like an hour ago, um, is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. Um, this is one that people have recommended tons. Like when I went to the, at uh, Yalk, I went to the poetry, um, talk where they were talking about free verse and things um they pretty much all the authors on the panel gave me the recommendation to read this so uh yeah i just i went to waterstones today and i bought this um i am not really sure what it's about um i had a quick kind of scan of the blurb before i went and bought it but um i i'm just gonna kind of see what it's about when i read it so this is one that I will feed back on once I've read it and I'll tell you what I think. But um, yeah, I'm excited to read this considering it's had so many people kind of singing its praises. Um, yeah, I'm excited to kind of see the hype of this one. So I'm glad I bought it today because I've wanted it for so long. So I finally went and bought a copy of it. So let me know if there's any that um, you've read in the past that I should add to my list because I really want to try and expand my collection. Um, I'm just loving them at the moment. I love reading them. They're becoming one of my favourite um, kind of styles. It's not a genre, is it? What do you call it? Writing style? Um, yeah, it's becoming one of my favourite styles to read and uh, I love kind of building up this little collection. Um, so if you've read any that you recommend, then please let me know. Or if you've read any of the ones that I have, then tell me what you think because I'd love to know what you thought of them. Um, and are you interested in reading this kind of style? Like, is it something that you aren't really interested in? Or is it something that you are uh, that you do want to kind of try out? Let me know. Um, I can kind of give you some recommendations on which one um, you should try, I think, if you haven't tried them before. Like I said, Goodnight Boy is a good one because it flicks between, like, the traditional prose and um, the poetry. Or One by Sarah Crossan is one that I will just recommend to everyone just because it's amazing. It's the first one that I ever read in this style and 
uh, is the one that kind of like hits you hardest. So let me know what you think. <laughs> um, I will see you soon. Bye!